always hooked on the plastic bag, but once it caught on, it went viral. Now, sections of our planet resemble plastic deserts, and oceans are booby-trapped with this stuff. But the revolution against the plastic bag has begun. China has outlawed it. India has SWAT teams devoted to stamping it out. And around the world, the ban the bag movement is catching fire. To convince that lot to do something green means that any town can do it. I'm Anne-Marie MacDonald. Doxone goes to the front lines in the battle of the bag. They're invading the world, amassing at an alarming rate. They can outlast us all. They are known to kill. And still, we love to go shopping with them. Bags in the world joined together as one. They could smother the whole damn earth and the people who live there on. And its facts suggest these which lead me to believe it's a mad, bad, mad, bad world. The ubiquitous plastic bag. It's so nice to know they're always at hand when you want one. But after 30 years as the king of carryalls, there's a battle shaping up over the bag. A battle between those who say it's a curse, a threat, and those who say stop picking on the poor misunderstood bag. The rest of us are caught in the crossfire. Plastic bags are so common, no one stops to think how many we actually use. So we devise a little test. We ask the Chase family of Winnipeg to save every bag they get shopping. After 11 weeks, they gather all their bags, show them off, say cheese, cheese, and then lay them out around the block. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 48, 48, 49, 50, 132, 132, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 136, 18 to 19. 220 bags. Whoa, that's a lot of plastic bags. 20 bags a week on average. Over a year, this family of four would have about a thousand plastic bags. I think that's just crazy if all those families across Canada or the world had that many bags in a period of three months. You'd wonder how many they had in a lifetime. Uh, when you have to find a bigger drawer. So why does it matter if we use so many bags? Tim Kasser is a psychologist who studies consumer behavior. Well, I think the plastic bag symbolizes a lot about consumer culture. Ultimately, it's something which we can use, but we use once, we usually just throw it away. It's not good for much else, and it's something which ends up damaging the earth. We're creating this culture that's about buying and using stuff, but everything we buy and use has to come from the earth, and the way that we're treating the earth right now just isn't sustainable. Kasser thinks most people want to be friendly to the environment, but every time they use a plastic bag, it's not friendly at all, a contradiction worth investigating. So outside a downtown Toronto mall, he sets up his psychologist's couch to help people think about what they're doing with all those bags. So why do you think that you end up using plastic bags? Habit. Habit. Because it was 
fast and a way to transport something home without, you know, carrying in my bare hands. I don't want to look like right. I stole from a store, that kind of thing. I think that's all they have to offer. Uh-huh. Yeah, basically. We don't have a choice. You don't have too many options here? The other thing is when you go to a store, most of the time they just give it to you, so it's almost harder to say, don't give me a bag, I don't need one. Or right. And that's so much what consumer culture is, is about finding the easy way to do something. So seductively easy, which is why Canadians use six billion plastic bags a year. To the good, though, the bag business keeps 7,000 people working to crank them out. With billions at stake, the industry wants us to know why they're really good guys. They actually help to keep our economy humming, says its Canadian spokesman, Serge Lavoie. I've heard people say that plastic bags are a symbol of our consumer society. If, we, if we're using six billion bags in Canada to carry home $300 billion worth of goods, uh, I guess it's the $300 billion worth of goods that you have to pay attention to. We have a plastic bag that we use to carry those products home in, and it's sitting under our sink. And we look at that and we say, my God, there are too many plastic bags in the world. We don't look in our fridge and say, my God, there's too much food in that fridge. Or they don't look at their clothes closet and say, my God, I bought too many clothes. Our economy is based on consumption. The debate over what is the right level of consumption, I think, is one that we all have to have. It's a mad, bad, mad, bad world. And now, a little history lesson to help us figure out how this squabble started. To the town of Duren, Germany, where, hidden in the basement of this schoolhouse, a former bomb shelter, Heinz Schmidt Bachem fervently guards the world's largest collection of plastic bags. Heinz presides over 150,000 bags, all meticulously catalogued, a shrine devoted to the worship of the almighty shopping bag through the years. His collection includes priceless paper bags. Andy Warhol dedicated this bag. Rare cloth bags. Benzene, it's a symbol for dangerous. Bags inspired by rock and rollers. Tina, my lovely Tina. Heinz started collecting in the 70s when plastic bags first came to Germany. He studied their history, wrote a book, and is the world's leading bag expert. Not that there's much competition. Diese Geschichte der Tüten, das ist eben der Alltag und mich interessiert der Alltag und nicht das, was äh, Staatsgeschichte. Äh, äh, the history of humankind as it relates to the plastic bag, according to Heinz Schmidt Backham. Human history begins when the first human needs to carry some things. So he takes a leaf, spins it into a bag. Now that's using your noodle. Then come more ingenious carriers. The gourd. An animal horn. And a personal favorite of many to hold the bigger items. The ever popular bull scrotum. You weren't using that, were you? Gerade die Hodensäcke, die sind dann gegerbt worden und das sind Beutel. Das sind die, eigentlich die Beutel, die die Bags, ne? But bull scrotums could not be produced in large enough quantities to satisfy demand. So baskets were used for centuries. And finally, along came the mass-produced paper bag. Ja, die Idee war wirklich, ein Werbemittel herzustellen. Die Fabrikanten sagten, ihr gebt euren Kunden Einen Beutel und da steht dann drauf, da ist Werbung drauf. The first plastic bag followed in the 1950s. Billions of bags of all shapes and sizes have been produced ever since. A bright advertising idea became the simple plastic bag we see everywhere. But the more we use, the more resources it takes to make them. Which brings up a question. Do you know what plastic bags are made of? No. You don't know what plastic is made of? No, I don't. No. <laughs> I don't. They're actually made of oil. Okay. Critics point to the environmental damage of using oil to produce billions of bags every year. But the plastic industry says that's just a drop in the bucket. 
all the plastics made in the world account for 4% of that natural gas and oil. So it's a very small footprint right away. People think the number is much, much higher. We are clearly using millions of tons of resin. Um, but is that large in the scheme of things? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, probably not. Not so fast, says the other side. That's still millions of barrels of oil just to make plastic bags. Oil is manipulated and massaged until it becomes polyethylene, a plastic that is almost impossible to destroy, explains Winnipeg biochemist Phil Halton. What you end up with is a solid lump, or if you heat it up, a viscous syrup. And one of the things that is done is to blow it through nozzles so that it emerges as a thin film, rather like blowing a bubble. And those thin films are then gathered up and rolled up into huge spools. The factories that make the bags take these flat sheets of film and cut them and cause them to glue together into a finished bag. The problem with polyethylene is that it is a very robust material that resists degradation. That is its virtue, it's also its shortcoming. A plastic bag made of polyethylene will degrade in a garbage dump at a very, very slow rate. And for practical purposes, we can sort of regard it as being almost indestructible. The fact that a plastic bag is indestructible is something that we see as a positive because an indestructible product that can be reused and remanufactured into something else is far more desirable than a product that gets used once and then simply disappears. No surprise that the plastic bag was hatched by American oil companies aggressively seeking new commercial outlets. Behind me is the birthplace of the plastic bag. They don't make plastic bags here anymore. There's a reunion here today of former employees of Mobile Oil, the engineers and marketers, the pioneers. They're gathering to reminisce about the day, around 30 years ago, that they brought the plastic bag to North America. My name is Terry Donovan. I'm Jim Blythe. Paul Howman. Jack Harrington. My name is Bob Barrett. I was a research associate. I was a development engineering manager. Vice president and general manager. General manager. The general manager. U.S. patent number three. Five eight three. Four six four. Five four three. No patent. For a collection of units. For a method of preparing. Shape a imposition. Patent. Patents are overrated. We have lived the American dream. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, <laughs> that's right. These men rode the American dream on the wave of a new miracle material, plastic. A material that promised bright days ahead through chemistry. Man has found a completely new power, the power of gleaming chemical plants, which, like the growing plants of the fields, take in nature's simple molecules and change them into new molecules, which form substances never before seen under the sun. These new materials constitute the world of plastics. Come with me for a minute. I want to talk to you. It was a material that was even celebrated as the way of the future in the classic movie, The Graduate. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir, you. Plastics. Exactly how do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. Will you think about it? Yes, I will. Enough said. That's a deal. Yes, there was a future in plastics. It was replacing many products made from paper. Milk containers, egg cartons, bread bags. You take out a bag, open it, and place it on the counter. <laughs> but at the grocery checkout, the paper bag still ruled. Nothing packed quite as well as the stand-up paper bag. It was the mission of these men from Mobile to make a better bag out of plastic. This was one of the early attempts at there making a stand-up yeah, bag. Would you believe yeah, that? I couldn't come up with one. And what that is, it's two layers of film. They are laminated together and Sealed by the heat. prototype was too expensive and never made. 
So they gave up the idea of merely copying the paper bag and came up with something completely different. But the shape of all of this has changed. A bag with handles. And these would be put on here. With a rack system to hold the bags and dispense them, they knew they had something. But how to get Americans to go for it? It was extremely difficult in the early days. Resistance to change was very, very strong. The suburbanite that wanted to put a dozen bags in the back of their car and they kept falling over became a sales obstacle. So we had to overcome all that stuff. Shoppers were loyal to their paper bags. And the paper industry, even then, howled that plastic bags weren't environmentally friendly. You should talk, said the plastics people. Paper bags deplete the forests and they take more energy to make. So the plastics people took a gamble. They went up against paper bags mano a mano. Depending on how risk averse the store was, you would mitigate that risk by offering to your customer, well, we'll pack your grocery sacks either way, paper or plastic. That simple phrase was a brilliant marketing move. Now, of course, over time, the customers got more used to plastic being offered, and oh yeah, I'll take plastic. And of course, the rest is history. It's a mad, bad, mad, bad world. What a mad, bad, plastic world. History is going to say the plastic bag was a wonderful, wonderful invention. But this wonderful invention will trigger a counter-revolution, where fighting the bag becomes high fashion and simple possession will get you busted. It drifts lightly through the landscape, barely noticed. This wonderful invention exerting its poetic hold on our imagination. You want to see the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed? At least it does in the Oscar-winning movie American Beauty, where it's infused with magic, regarded with reverence. And this bag was just dancing with me. Like a little kid begging me to play with it. For 15 minutes. That's the day I realized that there was this entire life behind things. A life that can last from 400 to 1,000 years. That's how long it takes to disintegrate. Even though they can be recycled, made into new plastic bags, most end up in landfills. Millions of others litter the landscape. Some bags on the loose love to play by the seashore. Oceanographer Tony Amos has studied this beach on the Gulf of Mexico for 30 years. Take a look at this beach. If you look at it closely, this is permeated with plastic because it breaks up into ever smaller and smaller pieces. Many animals will eat small pieces of plastic because they look like perhaps they should be a food item. Sea turtles will eat plastic, and you may wonder why, but this is a bag of uh, sea salt that is used by the shrimping industry uh, for their shrimp catch. And all of those holes that you see in there are turtle bites. 
Now, a turtle will, this thing is floating in the sea and a turtle takes a chomp down on it. It looks like food to them, color. And, um, and this is the actual result of that. This came from the stomach of a uh, sea turtle. Amos runs a rescue shelter for sick and injured marine animals in Port Aransas, Texas. Hundreds of birds and turtles have been hospitalized here, many recovering from nearly fatal encounters with plastic. Amos couldn't save this loggerhead turtle he found dying on the beach. 75.2. Today, he'll perform a necropsy to figure out what exactly killed it. This is the heart right here. He took part in a study that examined 100 dead sea turtles, and what he discovered chilled him. This is where it seems to be impacted, right here. About 60% of all sea turtles, that was well over 100 that we opened up, had plastic in their guts. It can, in fact, kill a turtle. Um, we had one turtle, um, a, a loggerhead, maybe about 100 pounds, that was impacted from its mouth to its anus. And um, that this amount of plastic, which weighs probably a couple of grams, um, was, was responsible for killing a sea turtle that, that weighed up to 100 pounds. I'm appalled by when I, when I see what, what, uh, what has happened and, um, to these animals. Well, some act of carelessness has killed an animal that could live for 100 years. So yes, it, uh, it, uh, if you'll excuse my terminology, it pisses me off. People should be aware of these things like plastic bags, which are so common in our environment that they probably don't even see if they blow away. They should be aware that they can do this kind of damage to our wildlife, and that they should be more careful with what they do with it. Maybe not use so much. One of the reasons I think that humans are likely to use plastic bags a lot and do a lot of other ecologically damaging behaviors is that they're distanced from the consequences of it. I mean, I might see a plastic bag blowing in the breeze every now and again, but what I don't see is all 400 plastic bags that I've used this year in a big pile in my backyard. You can't ignore the consequences of a plastic bag in a place like Delhi, India. Delhi still dumps its garbage and leaves it there, unburied. Cattle are sacred to Hindus here, allowed to roam free. They're attracted to dumps, poking around for something to eat. Among the scraps, they'll inevitably swallow a plastic bag. It can kill them. Plastic blocks the digestive tract, and the animal slowly starves to death. Volunteer veterinarians perform surgery that can sometimes save them. This one survived after 50 kilos of plastic was pulled from its stomach. No continent escapes the consequences of the plastic bag. In Nairobi, Kenya, you'll find the largest slum in Africa. There's little plumbing and few toilets among the makeshift houses. So the open sewers are clogged with what the locals call flying toilets, plastic bags that have been defecated in and tossed into the street. The nearby Nairobi Dam has almost dried up, and the ground here is saturated with waste and plastic bags. The river flowing through it has become a breeding ground for disease. When you look at some of the rivers that flow through Nairobi, for example, the, the water is hardly moving because of this uh, uh, huge amount of uh, plastic in water. Wangari Matai, member of the Kenyan parliament and Nobel Prize winner for her work in conservation, 
says plastic bags pose an indirect health threat to humans. We are in uh, areas which uh, are full of mosquitoes, and some of these mosquitoes do carry malaria. Now, without saying in any way that plastics cause malaria, because I do not want to be uh, misrepresented here, I do want, want to say, though, that we all know that when, plastic, when those plastic bags are thrown into the environment, they do not biodegrade. So when it rains, they collect water. And we all know that mosquitoes breed in stagnant water. So these become literally millions of uh, habitats for mosquitoes to breed in. The huge number of plastic bags has caused even wider problems here. Much of the arable land can't be used anymore for agriculture. Now what you have is a mixture of soil and a lot of plastic bags. Environmentalist Mutemi Gundi works with Wangari Matai. All our grazing fields, in fact, uh, have become um, uh, almost taken over by plastic bags. And what we are now saying is, if that goat uh, takes a plastic bag, after some time it gets sick. And that's another problem. We went to Dangoret Slaughterhouse and we found that six out of every ten slaughtered animals have plastic bags in their stomachs. Recently, the first steps were taken to ban certain types of plastic bags. There is some plastic that we can do without, and we can start with those very thin ones that become such a nuisance. You even find them on trees, and jokingly people say plastics, is the national flower of Kenya, because you find them everywhere. In the coastal Indian city of Mumbai, those thin, single-use bags have been a big problem as well, and they've provoked a major backlash. A few years ago, devastating floods in the area killed hundreds. It was made even worse by discarded plastic bags clogging the sewer drains. To prevent a repeat, they passed a law banning thin, single-use bags, and they gave the law some teeth. Your team will go first to that area, will follow you. The morning operational meeting of the world's only anti-bag police squad. It's these cops' job to keep those evil, thin bags off the streets. And today is a lovely day for a bag raid. First stop, the local market. From shop to shop, they carefully calibrate the plastic stock. The thicker ones pass muster, but not the thin ones. The offenders get stiff fines. From the retailers onto the wholesalers, sack after sack of bags are ripped open until they hit the jackpot. A major bust, 12 sacks full of illegal bags. They're seized and the owner fined the equivalent of $600, about half a worker's annual income. Since they started, the plastic bag squad has taken tens of thousands of kilos of illegal bags off the streets. Half a world away, the plastic bag will meet a formidable foe who wages war against her entire hometown. They just thought I was this balmy girl that had this stupid harebrained idea and whatever and shoot me away. Can she win their hearts and change their wasteful ways? And to convince that lot to do something green like this means that any town can do it. You just know some things have a hold on pop culture when... <laughs> right, and this is Carol's carrier bag room. Collectors collect them. Oh, it must be 6,000 I've got. <laughs> so, okay, now it's the plastic bag, and then what's next? Poets rhapsodize about them. See, the scientists are releasing all these reports about how, with global warming, things are going to change. But is anyone saying anything about the gradual disappearance of the plastic bag? 
and creative types use them in their art. I got married in this dress. I did indeed. Plastic is a free and abundant art material. It's everywhere. It lasts forever. It's pliable, flexible, and readily available. So it figures that environmental groups would shrewdly recruit pop culture celebrities to help their battle against the bag. The I'm Not a Plastic Bag was fashioned by British handbag designer Anya Hindmarsh to get people to stop using plastic bags and go with cloth. I like Anya Hindmarsh's bags. Some of her fancy creations go for $1,000. But you can get this one, limited edition, for $15. A deal? I missed one store already. <laughs> so I'm in my second store, and the leaders around me here are very hopeful we'll uh, get a bag today. <laughs> it has certainly become a must-have item for Anya's fans. I think it's very important to um, have this message and to, to tell everybody to save the planet, really not to use plastic bags anymore. Obviously, I hate people queuing and being here since 2 in the morning because it must have been pretty cold. But um, it's really exciting, actually, that people are really giving a damn and wanting to carry this bag, which so obviously states you know, I'm not a plastic bag, and, and I really begin to think about not taking all this, this wasteful plastic. The girl who actually gave it to me said, oh, I'll put it in a bag for you because it will keep it clean. So I thought, oh, well, you know. And she just put it in a bag, and I didn't, didn't have the strength. I was too busy looking for my credit card. It's a war out there on the streets between the virtuous forces of the cloth bag, the righteous army of the plastic bag, and the uncommitted. While the war rages in London, the battle has already been fought a four-hour drive southwest in quiet Modbury, a town of 1,500 souls. It all started with Rebecca Hosking, a wildlife TV camerawoman for the BBC. She recently shot a documentary in Hawaii. She never gave plastic bags much thought until she filmed dolphins that used to play with seaweed. Now they play with plastic bags because it's far more common for them to find plastic. It's horrifying because they have the naivety of a small child doing this. And like you would have a small three-year-old with a plastic bag, you want to take it off them. Exactly the same when you see this because they can get it wrapped around the head, they can get it around the rostrum, or they can even swallow it. This is horrific. This is this poor green turtle I came across one day out there, and I really wasn't expecting to see it. And I was phoning the scientists, who have obviously got permits to go in and say, you know, please come, because this guy's going. And by the time they arrived, because they were on another island, he'd already passed away. When she got back home, she noticed the same worrying problem among the sea life at her favorite scuba diving beach. And when I came here, pretty much, this is what I was finding on the bottom of the ocean floor. In half an hour, I found over 50 bags. And seeing them and knowing what they do, I couldn't leave them. And I came out of the sea looking like a sort of swamp monster with all this plastic hanging off me and by my amazement the locals here just didn't bat an eyelid they're so used to seeing it um, and it got to me and I just thought that you know as a child I never saw this this was never like this and I knew I had to do something she wanted her town to stop using plastic bags but it wouldn't be easy very early on, I phoned up the council, local council here. And we have an English saying, and they were absolutely it. They were about as much use as a chocolate teapot. They were not interested. I think they just thought I was this balmy girl that had this stupid hairbrain idea and whatever and shooed me away. And so I thought, well, fine. <laughs> I'll do it without you. So she went directly to the local shopkeepers and invited them to watch her film and to stop using plastic bags in their shops. And it was as naive as that. I didn't know if it had been done before anywhere in the world. I didn't know if anywhere in the country had done it before. When it came to the viewing, we had all of the shopkeepers. I don't think anybody didn't come. And everybody, bar none, I mean, it was, it was, we were really touched by the silence during the film. Everybody was entranced. 
showed us her movie and everyone sat there and she said it's my proposal to take Bodbury plastic bag free. Who's, who's for this? And without exception everybody put their hand up. I actually wanted to go one stage further because it made me want to go home and throw out all the, poly uh, all, all the plastic that I possess. I wanted to get rid of it. I thought this is horrible. Bypassing the local council, without a law or a new tax, the shopkeepers voted unanimously to get rid of the plastic bag. Every household got a free, reusable shopping bag. And if you forget your bag, the shop will sell you a compostable one for 10 cents. Grocers even swapped plastic fruit bags for paper. Even the doggies went green. You want some poopy bags for your dog oh, yeah, this morning? That is a dog poop bag, biodegradable. Look at Jess, look, it's for you. It's for you, for the other end though. <laughs> These guys, I love them to bits, but they're classic farmers. They're pro fox hunting when it was legal. Uh, the gas guzzling SUV drivers, they all love their meat. Um, they're conservative voters, classically. And to convince that lot to do something green like this means that any town can do it. And they are. Communities all over the United Kingdom have either banned or are pondering a ban. It's happening all around the world. Yeah, these are biodegradable. The battle moves to North America. Can a big city outflank big business and ban the bag? The industry that's fighting us, they better wake up. We're trying to coerce people into behaving a certain way by legislating it, and people will always resist that. plastic bags is heating up, though it's not mission accomplished yet. But there are showdowns around the world. In Ireland, the government levies a 30 cent charge on consumers using plastic bags. Almost overnight, the government said bag use dropped by 90 percent. The Canadian Plastics Industry Association, ever ready for a fight, says the answer isn't bans or taxes. We're trying to coerce people into behaving a certain way by legislating it, and people will always resist that. We feel that it's a better solution to get them involved in solving the problem, which is why we think reuse and recycling is a better approach. But only 1 to 3 percent of plastic bags are recycled in Canada. Most places don't allow plastic bags in blue boxes, so most just get thrown away. In the U.S., San Francisco had the same problem. Recycling was a failure. One percent of the waste stream being recycled after 10 years of programs is pathetic. Jared Blumenthal is the city's environmental point man, fighting to ban plastic bags and replace them with ones that'll disintegrate in compost. Naturally, the plastics lobby doesn't like that. You know, philosophically, I think we have a problem with the idea of engineering bags to be biodegradable simply because we don't want to have to deal with them in the long run. That doesn't make sense to us. Yeah, these are biodegradable plastic bags. The San Francisco battle of the bag is a struggle between those who want plastic bags banned outright. 99% of the bags are still going to landfill. And those who are fighting us, the industry that's fighting us, they better wake up. And their opponents, fronted by this local politician who knows how to score points out Hello. in the streets. Hola. Compostable bags are going to be ten times the cost. Plastic bags, what do you think about plastic bags? Convenient, right? And there's a plastic bag floating on the street. The battle reaches its climax in a vote early in 2007. San Francisco is so unique in pioneering this kind of legislation. We need to encourage everyone to participate in the recycling of more plastic bags. This will decide if San Francisco will be the first U.S. city to ban the bag. 
On the item, a roll call, please. On item 34, Supervisor McGulrick. McGulrick, aye. Supervisor Mercurini. Aye. Mercurini, aye. Supervisor Peskin. Aye. Peskin, aye. Supervisor Jew. Jew, no. Supervisor Maxwell. Maxwell, aye. Ten ayes, one no. The ordinance is passed on first reading. No contest. The ban passes 10 to 1. The city no longer allows plastic bags to be given out in major supermarkets. So, uh, a toast to... The end of plastic bags. The end of plastic bags in San Francisco and hopefully the start of something great in the United States and the rest of this planet. Now they just need to do it in Canada. In Canada, Leaf Rapids, Manitoba and Rosalind, B.C. have banned the bag and other communities are considering it. As for the rest of us, psychologist Tim Kasser says, for now, we'll each have to choose for ourselves. What if every time you grabbed your wallet before you went shopping, you thought to yourself, do I have my canvas bag too? I think so we can, but it's not, you know, it's, it's mainly to do with the culture here. Yeah. It has not become a part of the culture here, yeah? Right. So probably that's, that's one of the reasons why you just go around, pick up the bags, and at the end of the day, you don't know what to do with the bags, yeah? At one time, it was the king of bags. Today, it's pretty much roadkill. What's a poor, bewildered little bag to think? If I were a plastic bag, I'd be feeling misunderstood. And I'm misunderstood because uh, it's not understood how much I can be reused, how much I can be recycled, that all the attributes of my permanence work to the advantage of the environment, not against the environment. So I wish people would understand that about me. If I were talking to the plastic bag, I would say sometimes we think we're doing something that's good, and it turns out we weren't. And the very best thing you can do in that circumstance is to say, you know, I made a mistake, I'm gonna change. <laughs>